Uh, we want to welcome our Facebook family this evening. Thank you for joining us. We're so happy. It's not just Facebook anymore, is it? We're on different platforms, but thank you for hooking up and being with us tonight, regardless of the platform that you're using. We're glad you've joined us, and I'll just, I'll just going to speak for a few minutes tonight. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, what Elizabeth Taylor told one of her eight husbands, I won't keep you very long. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, uh, you know, don't don't be checking your watches to see how how long I'm going to be here. But uh, we're we're going to just get into the word for just a few minutes tonight. And uh, you know, I want to talk to you uh, about intercessory prayer. I want to talk to you about praying in tongues, and I want to talk to you about uh, effectual fervent praying tonight. I'm going to try to get all three of those in in less than 15, in 15 minutes or less. Uh, and if you think I can do that, you're crazy. But I'm going to try. But uh, uh, we we. Um, I, I love talking about prayer. Uh, prayer is, prayer is the thing. We preach prayer more than anything, but it, we do it less than anything, too. And it is, I still believe that prayer is the most important meeting that takes place at any church. And, uh, you know, I, I know some people think, well, maybe maybe the food, the food's the best thing about the, ser the services or the church or, or the, uh, you know, the, the uh, praise and worship. But I'm, I'm telling you what we need, we need to be prayer warriors. Amen. And so, uh, how many remembers the flood of 1993? I'm telling you what, that was quite the sight, wasn't it? You, you could just, uh, uh, the, 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 the cameras and the, the, the helicopters and the drones just caught so many uh, pictures. It was just hard to imagine. And, and I, remember, I remember the house, the farmhouse that was floating down the Mississippi River and, and thinking to myself, that's somebody's house. That's somebody's bedroom. That's somebody's kitchen. And, they're, and it's just floating away. And, and I mean, I guess you could call it a houseboat, but I, it probably didn't last very long with the torrents that, that, and the current that they had there. But uh, as, you watch, as you watch these things, it, it grieves your heart. But I'm, I'm going to go with it a little different. Uh, different way tonight on this on this picture this uh, flood it uh, we need that and here's what here's what I mean not houses going down the Mississippi but we need people to be together and get together so that we can see the water of the Holy Spirit so strong and it's carrying entire households into the kingdom of God not for destruction on the river but to bring families together into the kingdom of God nothing thrills me more when, than when we get a new family at Solid Rock and the, the whole family comes to Jesus the whole family begins to to be taught in the Word of God and you watch them grow it's just it's so exciting to watch families grow together and so um, you know, here's the here, the flood was the result. Actually, the flood of '93 and most floods are the result of several streams pouring in together, and you see what the force of those streams coming together can do. Right? It, it can cause it can cause great damage. It can do it, it just. But I'm talking. Uh, the the analogy that I want to use is when we come together and we pray, there will be a force. That, that we won't experience any other way. There will be a force in the kingdom of God and in the, in the spirit realm. And so uh, I, I, love, I love to talk about praying. Uh, I, I'm not the best prayer. Uh, I, I think Luke is one of the best prayers we have in our church. I love it when Luke comes up and, and prays. He's anointed. You know, there's different anointings, and Luke is highly anointed to pray. But uh, maybe Darlene and I, and, and maybe even Luke and Christy, have a better perspective uh, than, than many of you do concerning prayer because of all the countries that we've been to every country that we have visited people know how to pray they pray so hard and so long that that you have to get up and stop them before you can go on with the service you have to say okay thank you thank you thank you let's let's come together now and, and now it's time for the preaching of the word but these countries and it don't matter which country you're in you i don't care whether it's tanzania or kenya or or eastern europe ukraine cuba mexico wherever myanmar they i tell you we've got pictures and i went through some of these pictures but I, I i didn't want to take the time to to put them on the screen tonight but we've we've got pictures of people during service just praying and you'll, you'll say let's all stand and let's just have a word of prayer everybody join hands and let's pray they pray until I mean and and it's not just a now I lay me down to sleep prayer it is sincere fervent 
praying that, that, that they get involved with. And it's, it's not a show. It's, they're not trying to impress these Americans. That, that's, the, that's their lifestyle, is they are prayer warriors. And so we've, we've been privileged to witness that in these other countries, how these people uh, come together and, and, and have these corporate prayer meetings. And, you know, I have a, I have a bishop friend, and, and Luke knows Bishop Solomon, uh, and, and uh, he, he's never been to our church, but, but uh, I'll get him here someday. But Bishop Solomon gets up at 3 o'clock every morning, and he calls how many people? I think it's... I think it's 300 people he will call every morning and say, it's time to get up and pray. It's time to get up and pray. And then he goes and prays for the rest of the morning. And uh, it, just, it just blows my mind. And when they pray, it's not like they're sleeping, praying, eating, drinking coffee. It's pray, 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 pray. Uh, and uh, it's, it, how many of those prayer can be exhausting? Oh, excuse me. How many of those prayer can be exhausting? Prayer can be exhausting. And so when I look at the church of the United States and compare it with the churches of other countries, uh, we have a lot to learn here in America about the power of, of praying and the power of coming together in, in intercession. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever had to stop us from praying yet. Uh, I look forward to the day that we get so, uh, such, we're such prayer warriors that we'll have to say, okay, okay, calm down. Let's, let's go on to the next part of the service. But, uh, uh, I tell you what, there's nothing like you get that many people praying together and the glory of God's going to come down. Do you hear me? The glory of God is going to show off when you get that many people praying together. So, uh, we, we, we need to learn to pray together. And you know what? I'm so proud of Solid Rock. Darlene and I have been talking for, you know, about this just about every week, how we're so proud of the people that are coming up on Wednesday nights and praying and praying out, praying out loud. And, and, uh, I mean, you're coming up and getting these prayer cards and you're, you're praying over them. Then you're grabbing another one and walking around and praying over it. And you may not be screaming at the top of your lungs, but I tell you what, we've come a long ways. I don't believe I don't believe we have to be intimidated anymore with our prayer life. Amen. Or, uh, and and uh, thank, thank you for speaking out. Thank you for praying out. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I know that, uh, uh, you know, God's, God's not deaf, right? Uh, you, don't, you don't have to scream. But uh, that, uh, I, I like to hear people praying out. And we'll, we'll talk about that scripture here in just a moment. Um, I want everybody to take your, take your hand and make an O. Make an O with your hand, okay? If you want to do it with both hands, I can't. I've only got one tonight. Yeah. This, this is a, this is, uh, we'll call this the spout from heaven coming to earth and coming to minister to different people. Uh, and, and I want you to understand that we... God does not have the, the valve to that spout. The valve is in your hand. That valve is, is in your hand. And, uh, you know, you, 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 it's a, it's, picture that hose coming from the throne of God. And, and on our end is that valve. And we can open that valve by prayer. We can close that valve. We can open that prayer. And uh, if, if you, I don't know if that fire hydrant's up here yet or not, but there's a fire hydrant coming. And uh, you see the, see the gush coming out of the fire hydrants, how it's just a forceful attack. I don't even know if you could stand in front of it or not. It may knock you over. I've never tried it. But uh, it, there's such a force coming out of there. And I, I picture that coming, like, like coming from the throne of grace, that that power and that glory and that, 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 that coming from the throne of God that coming right down and but by the time it gets to some of us we've got the valve so almost shut that we're just getting a sprinkle or a drip now imagine a sprinkler take your fingers and go like this make a sprinkler okay I, think it's, I mean I don't know if that's a very good sprinkler or not but anyway uh, it's 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 different than the O right but anyway on the sprinklers uh, you know you, it's a whole lot less it's a whole lot less water and uh, you, you're not going to get nearly the amount uh, as you do, uh, uh, there's more power in, in the hose and in the uh, uh, fire hydrant than there is in a, in a sprinkler. So with that in mind, I want you to go to this verse with me. And uh, we're looking at King James of James chapter 5, verse 16. James chapter 5, verse 16. And uh, I'm, I'm talking kind of slow tonight. I'm, I'm kind of taking my time and trying to be methodical so that, 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 that you'll understand that we're trying to, to teach tonight line up online line and not just trying to, to prove a point, okay? So in James 5 and 16, it says, Confess your faults one to another. Now, how many know that's hard to do? Because we don't want anybody to know we have faults, right? Because we're all so perfect. There's probably not anybody in here tonight that has any faults, right? Come on. Come on, you bunch of 
fibbers. We've all, we've all got faults, don't we? So it says, confess your faults one to another. It also says to pray for one another. Pray one for another uh, that, that you might be healed. The way to get your healing is to pray for somebody else that needs healing. Pray for somebody else that's going through something, and you see what God can do for you. Uh, most of the times we're so, so down and out and feeling sorry for ourselves, we can't even pray for somebody else. But listen, when we can do what the Word of God says, you know, I may not feel like it, but I'm going to pray for you today, and I'm not doing it just so I can be healed. I want to see you healed. I'm praying because I want to see you healed, and the, the, the reciprocal is that, that I will be healed for praying for you. Isn't that amazing? That's a promise from the Word of God. But now look at this last part because I want to just zero in on this. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now there's some words in there that, that might be confusing and, and they're different. It sounds like they're having fun. Uh, that it's different than uh, maybe our uh, the everyday language that we use today. But not, don't just read what it says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Uh, read what it implies. Read what it implies, but it because it, it, it implies that there's a kind of praying that doesn't do anything. Y'all see that? The effectual fervent prayer is the one that gets the job done. So evidently, there must be a kind of praying that don't get the job done. Come on, you quiet Baptist. <laughs> so the word effectual in the Greek uh, is, the, is, is the Greek word uh, inner, inner geo. And I know you've heard this before, but let me, just, let me just refresh our memories. It's the word inner geo, and it means energy. It means powerful. It means mighty. That's the kind of prayer that gets the job done. The mighty, the powerful, the, 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 the bold, the, the, the energetic prayer. And uh, somebody said, well, I don't have to be energetic when I pray. No, you don't have to, but you get to. And, and there's something about being energetic in our praying. In other words, let me say this word. Maybe you understand this word better. Passionate. Being passionate about our prayer time. You know, when, uh, when you're passionate about something, and I did a series on this a few years ago, but when you're passionate about something, everybody knows it, Right? Uh, you could, because uh, that, that's, that's all you talk about, you know, is, is, is what you're passionate about. And so the, there, there is a kind of praying, evidently, that doesn't do anything. Somebody said, well, I'm just, I'm a friend of God. God will give me, he'll, he'll just give me anything. No, he won't. You need to, you need to read the Bible. You need to, need to see what he says, and you need to find out that his promises are all conditional in the word of God. There's something we have to do to release that blessing of God. Amen. And so uh, go with me to Luke chapter 15, um, chapter 11, verse 5. Luke chapter 11, verse 5, and we're going to look through verse 10. Thank you, Alex. You're doing a good job back there tonight filling in. We appreciate that. Luke chapter 11, verses 5 through 10. We're going to read this slowly, and then we're going to go back and look at it. And Jesus said to his disciples... Suppose one of you should go to a friend's house at midnight and say to him, Friend, let me borrow three loaves of bread. A friend of mine who is on a trip has just come to my house, and I don't have any food for him. And suppose your friend should answer from the inside, Don't bother me. The door is already locked. My children and I are in bed. I cannot get up to give you anything. Well then, well what then? I tell you that even if he will not get up and give you the bread because you are his friend, yet he will get up and give you everything you need because you are not ashamed to keep on asking. Can you all see that tonight? Did you, did you, do I need to read it again or did you get it? This, this is good. This is good. He said, he said uh, be, because you are his friend, he will get up and give you everything you need because you're not ashamed to keep on asking. Some of these prayer requests that we've had on Wednesday nights and on Tuesday are repeats from the week before. But I want to tell you something. If the prayer's not been answered, we ought to pray for it again and again and again. Somebody said, well, then we're praying in unbelief. No, we're not praying in unbelief. We're praying in faith because I believe God's going to do it. I just keep believing God's going to do it. 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 
And so we just keep praying. And, uh, and so he says, because you're not ashamed to keep on asking. And so I say to you, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. For everyone who asks will receive. And he who seeks will find. And the door will be opened to anyone who knocks. It sounds to me like God wants us to come asking. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He wants us to ask. Amen. Don't, don't get this, this uh, false humility and say, well, I, I don't want to ask God for anything. He wants us to ask. Amen? And so the kind of prayer that works is the energetic, vibrant, effectual prayer. That works, and that gets God's uh, attention. Now, let me just say this. When, when we come up here and pray... Uh, I, I'm probably I'm probably the loudest one up here, and I don't do that just to be to be loud or to show off. But uh, you may not have the same volume that I do. You may not have the same energy that I do. Uh, but there is an energy that you have because I've seen some of you when you get your dander up. You know what dander is, right? You know you 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 can you can get your dander up real quick when something doesn't go the way you think it should, or or, or somebody pulls out in front of you. Or somebody hits their brakes on, in the front of you, you know, or, or somebody rides your taillights, you, you know. We can get our dander up, amen? amen. Come on, church, help me say amen. amen. We, can, we can get our dander up and we can, you know, I, don't tell me you can't get a little noisy because we, we can. Amen. Sometimes when we pray, we, maybe we ought to get our dander up. You know, I am sick and tired of Satan attacking the families at Solid Rock Family Church. Amen. I am so tired, and, and I'm not just talking about one or two. There are families that are being attacked in solid rock. There's, there's uh, physical bodies that are being attacked. And you know what? Sometimes I just get my dander up and get a little bit aggravated at the devil. I get aggravated, and, and I, I just command him to leave uh, in Jesus' name. And darling, I was praying yesterday. Some, somebody sent a request, and we just stopped and prayed. And uh, uh, we just, I got my dander up Monday night. Darlene got in her car. Her, her knee went out of place. And uh, when her knee goes out, she can't move it. Uh, she, she just, it's in, in, intense pain. And, uh, and man, we just prayed, and I got my dander up. I know those guys standing around the porch out there, uh, Brother McFarland, they was probably wondering what's going on. But we got our dander up, if you know what I mean. We, we just prayed and got mad at the devil. And I'm telling you what, the, the, the energetic prayer will get the job done. I will tell you what happens if you don't have an energetic prayer. You might fall asleep. Do you ever kneel to pray and get sleepy? You start, you start getting your dander. You start praying loud. You start praying with energy. You start praying with passion, and you see what happens. Amen? Uh, I've watched some of you get onto your children, and you can, get, you can get pretty loud getting onto your children. You know, there's people here at Solid Rock that go to, to, go to ball games every so often. And uh, guess what? When the umpire makes the wrong call, or they think it's the wrong call, they can really, they can really yell, can't they? Or, or if, if somebody gets on first, or if somebody uh, knocks somebody in, or if somebody gets a home run, I tell you, it gets loud. You get loud. You get, you get excited. You, you, you know, you scored. Thank God we're learning how to pray with energy. I'm not going to be intimidated because somebody might listen to me and I might get my words wrong. Somebody told me recently, he said, oh, Brother Rhodes, I wish I could pray like you. No, you don't. Pray like you. Just pray like you. But what I want to see Solid Rock do is get a little more energetic in our prayer time. And not just here at the church, but when you're praying at home. Darlene said her dad used to wake her up every morning, early in the morning, praying in another building. They were in the parsonage sleeping and he was in the another in the church in another building praying and he would wake them up praying he was by himself he wasn't trying to press anybody but he was energetic in his prayer life he was uh, uh, mighty powerful passionate in our prayer time and so I, I, I want us tonight to begin to make efforts to moving toward that it's not going to happen overnight it's not going to happen in one week but I think we need to not be intimidated that somebody's listening to us or, and we might mess up a word or, the, or the, the pray in the proper way I think we need to just get energetic and powerful uh, and, and uh, passionate with our prayer time amen, amen. and so uh, 
uh, tonight we're going to pray. We're going to pray corporately. We're going to pray. I've already went over time, so I'm going to wind this down. We, we're going to pray corporately. We're going to pray individually. We, uh, I don't see any cards up here tonight, but we can, we can still. What's, okay, all right. Uh, we do have a special request that we'll take care of here. But uh, we, we may just, uh, we may do it a little different tonight. But if you, uh, oh, there they are. If you want to, Brother Luke will pass those around. Uh, we will set the table down and we will uh, come up here and pray together. Before we come up here and pray together, I'm, I'm going to lead us in some prayers. And uh, I, I want you to agree with me. And, uh, you know, uh, I, want, I, I said I was going to talk to you about tongues, praying in tongues, praying in the Holy Ghost. Do you know that sometimes when we pray in English, I feel like maybe sometimes we pray selfishly. Sometimes we never know what the perfect will of God is. And we pray, we pray our will, not his will. Listen to me. Do you know when you pray in tongues, you will always pray the perfect will of God. You will never pray outside the will of God when you pray in the Holy Ghost. Praying in tongues is always the perfect will of God. Praying in English, sometimes we have a tendency to get a little selfish or want our desires or, or our will to be done. But I believe when we pray in tongues, I believe with all my heart, that's the valve that opens up that hose. That's the valve or the wrench that takes off the cover on the fire hydrant. When we begin to pray in tongues, what a good starting place. Praying in tongues, praying in tongues. And so uh, uh, we, we read about this. Uh, prayer meeting in Acts chapter 4 and it says that uh, the whole place shook while they were praying do you think it was an earthquake no it was because there was a praying house full of people and their vibrant energetic prayers man they went out of that place and the Bible says they turned the world upside down so I've asked Nick to uh, to play some music tonight while, while we pray and uh, I, I've, got, I've got a few things here I want us to pray about. The first thing I want us to do is just worship the Lord for just a couple of uh, minutes. Just spend some time in worshiping God. And then uh, the next point I want to make is that we're going to ask God to forgive us and to cleanse us. I want God to hear me, don't you? And so I want my heart to be pure. Uh, we're going to go to these first four things, and we'll get the next four things uh, right after that. Then we're going to pray for the lost in our community. Uh, and then we're going to come against the, the, the sin in our community, the drugs, the, the crime, and uh, all the vices that are uh, taking place here in, in our community. Uh, there, there's, I think I spelled that wrong. I'm sorry. But uh, we, we just need to, uh, to pray together as a church tonight on the same thing, same subject for just a few minutes, okay? So will you do this with me tonight? Will you start off tonight by just lifting your voice and let's worship God together? Yes, ma'am. We want to say goodbye to all of those that are watching online. God bless you. Thank you for joining us for this short uh, presentation tonight. May the Lord bless you. We'll see you Sunday morning. You don't want to miss Sunday. God bless. <laughs>